dear students, today I am going to discuss on the topic prehistoric archaeology and its relation with different branches of anthropology. Now let me introduce about this topic. Anthropology is the scientific study of humanity. It is the holistic study of man. It studies man as a physical organism and also as a social being, in space and time and at all levels of culture. Anthropological researches are carried on to study the human development from the very earliest time as well as on to the contemporary human societies. In the beginning, this subject was divided into two main branches that is physical and social or cultural anthropology. At present, anthropology comprises four major sub-disciplines such as physical anthropology, prehistoric anthropology or prehistoric archaeology, linguistic anthropology, and social or cultural anthropology that is ethnology. All these subfields together give anthropologists a broad approach to the study of humanity all over the world, both past and present. Prehistoric archaeology studies many of the past for which there is no written records. In the absence of the written evidence, the study of past life and the culture depends on the material remains left unconsciously by the prehistoric man. As a scientific discipline, prehistoric archaeology has developed tremendously. As a result, several new subfields or approaches have emerged which gave birth the concept like new archaeology, ethno-archaeology, social archaeology, environmental archaeology, salvage archaeology, underwater or marine archaeology, forensic archaeology, cognitive archaeology, action archaeology, etc. All of these new areas mainly concentrate to the reconstruction of total libraries of man's prehistoric past. The study of prehistoric archaeology, therefore, is very much related with both physical and social or cultural anthropology as well as linguistic anthropology. Physical anthropology studies man as a biological species. It studies human origin, evolution, biological variation, and genetics. It also encompasses the study of fossil man. It is concerned with the study of racial types of men, their differences and distinctive features. Besides, bio-social adaptation to different geographical and ecological zones. It involves the study and analysis of human anatomy, osteometry, craniometry, and anthropometry. The major areas of interest in physical anthropology includes biological anthropology, primatology, human anatomy, human taxonomy, paleontology, population genetics, human ecology, forensic anthropology, medical anthropology, etc. All these sub-disciplines of physical anthropology is related directly or indirectly with different areas of prehistoric archaeological study. Paleoanthropology is the study of human evolution through the analysis of fossils. Paleoanthropologists use a variety of scientific techniques to date, classify, and compare fossil bones to determine the links between modern humans and their biological ancestors. For the archaeologists, Reconstruction of biological evolution is of equal value. Both physical anthropologists and prehistoric archaeologists may closely work while studying ancient tools, associated finds, including fossil remains or remains, and other activities of early men, to learn the earlier behavior of men as well as to reconstruct the prehistoric culture or cultures. According to L. G. Freeman, quote, within the field of anthropology, the discipline called paleoanthropology is the study of which attempts to discover, describe, and interpret evidence for the physical and behavioral evolution of 
Homo sapiens and his hominid ancestors and relatives. Unquote. Thus, it embraces scholars who call themselves as physical anthropologists on the one hand and archaeologists or prehistorians on the other hand. It is now clear that Paleoanthropology embraces two distinct fields of studies in its level of specialization. The role of paleoanthropology is very important in the excavation of burial sites, the analysis of skeletal remains throw light on the physical and racial characteristics of people. Thus, the studies conducted in different parts of the world have traced the expansion of early men throughout the world. Though the concept of pure racial types has been discarded by the modern anthropologists, various attempts have been made by physical anthropologists for racial classification. They classify the human population of the world into three major races based on the various racial criteria such as head form, face form, shape of the nose, eye, hair, stature, body proportion, etc. The three major races, for example, the negroid, caucasoid, and mongoloid, have distinctive physical characteristics. Each racial type is concentrated in a particular geographical area. Each racial group has a number of subgroups. They are distributed in different parts of the world, would certainly indicate racial migration. Racial migration is an important area of prehistoric archaeology. For example, the largest concentration of the negroid racial group is found in Africa. But this type is also found in the Andaman Islands and the Maloi Peninsula. Again, the Mongoloid race predominates in Japan, Korea, Mongolia, China, Russia, and parts of Southeast Asia like Myanmar, Thailand, etc. But they are also found among the Native American Indians and the Eskimos. Similarly, the subgroups of the Caucasoids, for example, the Nordics, the Mediterranean and the Alpine are found in Europe, West Asia and India. The study of the racial characteristics of the authors of an ancient civilization would give some clues regarding migration and context. For instance, the origin and diffusion of the megalithic practices in South India poses a problem and the analysis of the skeleton remains should furnish some evidence regarding racial stock. Thus, the skeleton remains found at various archaeological sites would certainly give physical anthropologists an idea of the various racial strains or elements and head populated in different parts of India at different times. They would also reveal the continuity and discontinuity of the present-day population and migrating trains and racial affinities of different periods. For example, the report on the skeleton remains of the Brahmagiri megaliths reveal a predominantly Australoid type and a more or less medium stature, platyhine type with prognathism, indicates the probable of cyto Iranian stock. In many excavated archaeological sites like Harappa, Mohenjo-daro, Lothal, and Kalibangan, they are all proto-historic sites, and Burja Hong, Neolithic site. Physical anthropologists, particularly paleoanthropologists, are joining hands with prehistoric archaeologists in order to know about early racial stock. Social anthropology or cultural anthropology is another but an important branch of anthropology which focuses on the study of society and culture. 
It deals with the social and cultural institutions and tradition or traditions of the society. It is devoted to the study of human cultures all over the world, both similarities and differences. The social or cultural anthropologists attempt to study culture in its general sense. The term culture for an anthropologist referred to the customary ways of thinking and behaving of a particular group or society. The culture of a social group therefore comprises language, economy, social structure, knowledge, belief, law, art, architecture, customs, food habits, taboos, and so forth. Hence, prehistoric archaeology is directly concerned with social and cultural anthropology. One of the most important aims of modern archaeological anthropology is to reconstruct the total life ways as far as possible. Modern prehistorian not only try to reconstruct the daily life and customs of the prehistoric people, but also try to know the changing aspects of culture. They raise questions like how culture changes and why. In order to do so, it is founded the remains that they dug had their closest counterpart among the living primitives rather than among civilized people. Therefore, it was natural for them to come to anthropologists, especially social anthropologists, who gather information on primitive people. The new archaeological anthropologists assume that the reconstruction of now defunct modes of cultural adaptations can be considered as the ethnology of prehistoric man, directly comparable to the data collected from modern functioning societies. With this view, life ways of living primitive societies are most frequently studied by intensive ethno-archaeological research methods in order to gain insight into the mechanism of the past cultural adaptation. The need to understand the basis for the reconstruction of past life ways has prompted the growth of new branches of archaeology called ethno-archaeology and action archaeology. Ethno-archaeological work has great advantage that one starts from present and walks back in time taking prehistoric records as guide is available. It studies man's prehistoric past with the help of ethnographic materials and literature. There are many tribal communities in different parts of the world who are still in food gathering stage or still manufacturing stone tools or practicing very primitive method of agriculture. Like social anthropologists, prehistorians also live among those primitive tribes, observe their tool making technique and other aspects of life which throw a flood of life regarding their prehistoric counterparts. For example, the dry farming method that are still practicing in the hills of Northeast India would illustrate the ancient method of Neolithic agriculture. The circular type of huts used by the present day village folk in Bellary district of Karnataka talk well with the similar ones found in the Neolithic strata at Teklakwata. Here, Archaeologists and ethnologists combine together in order to get insight about the past life ways. The action archaeologists directly study the functioning primitive societies in the search of clues to the understanding of the past. In this field of inquiry, the distinction between archaeology and anthropology, or more precisely ethnology, does not exist since archaeology is deeply rooted in the material aspects of the past cultures and their related technology. It entreats upon the action archaeologists to understand the implication of primitive technology and in doing so 
they have to learn the methods of artifact manufacture that were lost before thousands of years. Because of the development of such anthropology oriented works in recent decades during 1960s onwards, there emerged concepts like quote, archaeology is anthropology or it is nothing, unquote, as stated by American archaeologists Willie and Phillips in 1958, or concepts like quote, archaeology is the anthropology of the dead, unquote, as stated by David Hurst Thomas in his book Predicting the Past. Thus, the very close relationship between prehistoric archaeology and social anthropology, particularly ethnology, is established in ethno-archaeological study. Now, let me come to the concluding remarks. Prehistoric archaeology is one of the very important branches of anthropology. It studies men and his culture of a particular period for which we don't have any written records. In the absence of written records, the study of past culture is based on the material leftovers or remains of prehistoric people. During the last few decades, the goal of prehistoric archaeology has changed tremendously. The focus is now on the total reconstruction of prehistoric life waste. The people behind the background has become equally important. It is the physical anthropologists who basically provide information regarding the creator of the past culture by analyzing the skeletal remains dug out by the archaeologists. The special branch that makes a common platform for the physical anthropologists as well as prehistoric archaeologists is known as paleoanthropology. Reconstruction of now defunct mode of life is very difficult task. It is a social or cultural anthropologist, especially ethnologists, who support the archaeologists. Like social anthropologists, archaeologists study the modern group of primitive societies in order to gain insight about the prehistoric people. New branches of archaeology such as ethnoarchaeology and action archaeology emerge in which both ethnologists and archaeologists work hand in hand. Archaeological study in the present day is thus closely tied with anthropology, both physical and social anthropology. <music>